Uh, because like whenever like the the mother dies at childbirth, they're like nobody wants the kid. All right, serve it up for dinner. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Literary Liberation Podcast. Today, we will be discussing, analyzing, and reviewing a very popular horror book on Book Talk, Tender is the Flesh by Augustina Basterica. I apologize if the pronunciation of that is off. Um, we will be posting a lightly edited version on our Patreon, which is at Literary Liberation. For more content outside of the podcast, please check out our Instagram and TikTok at Literary Liberation and Twitter, now called X, uh, at Lit Lib Podcast. I am your co-host, Mariah, and you can find me at Hungry Rye on all social media platforms. And I'm Kristen. You can find me at KRXXTXN on all social media platforms. And today we are joined by our very first guest, Evan, at Left of the Projector. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me as your, your first guest. Okay, we don't have any other friends, so. <laughs> <laughs> don't say that. I'm saying it. Um, do you have a little deal you want to say about yourself or like shout yourself out? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can, like you said, Kristen, you can follow me on left of the projector pod on Instagram. I have an X account, which is L O T P underscore pod, but I don't use that very much. But on my podcast, uh, which you both have been on, I discuss uh, movies from a leftist perspective and we do wide range of movies. And yeah, I was going to, I was just saying that I'm starting a new series on historical films so looking at things like citizen kane gone with the wind movies that people just want to pretend they've seen so i'll teach you about them pretend they've seen i haven't seen any of those movies if it's in black and white i'm not watching it for real <laughs> especially oh if God. i can't watch it on tiktok in two times speed so mariah did the research on the author for this book so what what do you want to teach us about this augustina so Augustina Bastrica is an author from Argentina. Um, she's written several books, but only two have been translated into English, and both have gained rapid popularity on Book Talk. One is called like Nineteen Claws and Crows. Don't quote me on that one. I don't remember it off the top of my head. We could probably look it up. And then Tender as a Flesh, which is what we're going to be talking about today. She seems to write of the two that I have. I own both of those. They seem to be like dystopian future novels. Um, with elements of body horror. That's what I have gathered from her writing. I don't know if it's all like that, but the translated pieces, that is the general theme. So she doesn't have any controversies? I could find a lot about her, at least in English, so I don't know. You mean you didn't learn Spanish for this yeah. podcast? <laughs> um, I This book has gotten a lot of ratings. On Goodreads, I checked before we came on, it had 161,000 reviews, averaging around 3.82 stars out of five so that's a lot it does of reviews pretty for decently. goodreads too because what's the most reviewed book on goodreads what do we think it is do you think it's like the bible or do no, we think it's, it's harry, potter? harry potter yeah i was gonna say harry potter who's reading the bible five stars first of all <laughs> who's reading the bible and reading it one so star <laughs> do not recommend <laughs> would not pick there's up there's too much smiting in there <laughs> oh i was just saying i found harry potter in the deathly hollows it has 3.5 million ratings so it's still got a lot in comparison yeah. to some of the books that we've read. But this is definitely, ha I think this is probably one of the most rated besides like Colleen Hoover probably. Mm -hmm. Or Haunting Adeline. I wonder how many reviews did Haunting Adeline have? Do you remember? No, not off the top of my head. It was a lot though. What were you going to say? Wait, how many, how many reviews did you say this one had? 280,000? 100. 161. Well, the the Saint, the King James Bible only has 260,000 ratings. So oh, it's so almost it's at the Bible. <laughs> Um, so Haunting Adeline only has 292,000, so this is only 100,000-ish less than Haunting Adeline. I feel like that's pretty high, though, for what it is, like, being horror books. I don't see a lot outside of, like, Stephen King being rated rapidly, like, a lot, and his books are old as shit, so. I don't think there's any, like, authors that are, like, big in horror either, except for, like, King. Especially someone that does not consume, like, horror books in general. There's, like, that new guy, Brady Hendrix, is that his name? He's wrote like a few horror, thriller, whatever you want to call them. But I, guess I don't know. I don't, know. I don't think I've read any of his stuff. He wrote Twilight, like... the first book, has 6.3 million. Damn. That's crazy. But still, I mean, comparatively, because like you probably look at like, I feel like movie reviews will have like 10 million reviews or 5 million reviews. So, like, 
recently. Like, how many reviews does the Barbie movie have on Letterboxd? Yeah, especially the newer movies are going to get more just because everyone is seeing it. Yeah. But I just feel like for a book, I definitely think it's probably decent. I mean, how many... Can't you look up, like, the book sales on it? I didn't look it up, to be well, honest. The, I the, annoying, the annoying thing about, I think, uh, Barbie is it doesn't... Or, like, uh, movies on Letterboxd it doesn't show you how many there are. Oh, it doesn't? That's important. At least that I could find. Oh, wait. 700,000 reviews for Barbie. Okay. So, okay. But how many people... You have to I feel like a lot thing. of people don't go through and, like, review things like that. I think it's a lot more... At least nowadays, it's a lot more like my generation, like Generation Z and younger, are definitely more into like rating things. Because I feel like before it was always just like critics that reviewed things. You look at Rotten Tomatoes and stuff like that. Rotten Tomatoes, apparently, I was reading something recently that they're been paying people to certain critics to give reviews because ratings are much lower now on things, and it makes them look bad. Like the movie studios look bad, so they're paying to get ratings. Oh, like reviews. they're paying Rotten Tomatoes writers. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't think it's good reviews, just reviews and hoping that it's good. Uh, well, I mean, I feel like that's not that bad because, I mean, like, that's like giving out arcs and stuff like that. They do that with, like, book community. You know, you got to know what people are going to think of the book before you mash publish it. True. But do we want to get into the ratings? Yeah, we can. Our non spoiler ratings. My non spoiler rating. I can go is... first if you want. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Or yours no, is go short. Ahead. Go for it. Oh, my non spoiler <laughs> rating is do not read this book. Don't waste your time. Don't spend your money. If someone gives it to you, give it back. <laughs> um, That's all I have to say. How many stars did you rate it? One. I think I gave Haunted Yadaline <laughs> a better rating than this, which is sad. All right. I'll, no, I'll, I, I will let up. Okay. Yeah, so I, I, gave it, I, gave, I gave this movie three stars. And this movie? <laughs> so, sorry. Wrong podcast. The movie, <laughs> yes, yes. No, I, I gave this book three stars. And I feel like it's slightly generous, but my reasoning to give it three stars is that despite my problems with the content of the book, I think it is a well-written, in some senses, it does make you feel icky. And I'm still thinking about this book months later. So I, in some sense, it does have that sticking point. But we'll talk about why I don't like the book. But you, So you think it's like mid, or do you think it's less than mid? Yeah, I would say it's mid, and I think if it wasn't written by someone who's just a kind of a, a liberal, like if yeah. this had been by a leftist, I think it would have been a much more interesting book. So would you recommend it to anybody to read? I think that you should read it, but get it for free. Okay. Borrow it from your library like I did. I paid zero cents for this book. Yeah. And I, that's, uh... I bought this book, and I wish I didn't. But it, it, it's very interesting to me. I'm not as into deep into book talk so i don't know what most people would had said about this it but was, i can see why it was popular it was popular well because like i'm there's like with book talk there's so many subsections where there's like horror section there's romance section there's fantasy section where there's like fiction section non-fiction section and there's like subgenres in each of those sections and tender is the flesh i think i saw that on my for you page a lot and i don't get any other like horror recommendations at all really like the only time i get horror recommendations like halloween time but any other time i don't and i was getting this like consistently at least last year and i just ignored it. that should it should have stayed that way so it seems like it broke like boundaries almost of uh across different mm -hmm. people's interests because it was it see i saw it all the time i'd always see people that little logo from the front constantly i'm like what is this book that everyone's reading like this and then yeah exactly i just when you mentioned this, I'm like, well, okay, I've heard everyone talk about this book. I got to read it. I, I, this is just another evidence that I should not listen to Mariah's recommendation ever. Because Mariah is always having me Did reading. I say it was a good book? You gave it three stars. That's a myth. <laughs> okay, but you still made me read it. Wait, because so, it's good content. <laughs> what, so what, I want to hear what, you, what do you say about it then, Mariah? The, what's, would you recommend it? Is it like a, well, oh, I'm curious. So I originally, when I was going on my big fiction book talk journey, I was getting a combination of monster smut and then like extreme horror books. Well, cause you and just Tender started the reading. Recommended. You just started reading fiction like this year majorly before it was only nonfiction, right? Yes. Pretty much. Yeah. So I saw it and it kept popping up every like horror book talker was talking about it and I caved. I was like, okay, I'll buy it. There was a whole list of them, and people were like, this 
I can't look at meat the same way because everyone kept talking about like it's a critique of the meat industry, whatever. Um, and it, it starts off very abrupt and like in your face. It's a lot to take in. But as the story progresses and you're following the main protagonist, it you don't really know where you're going and then it ends and you're just like well that all built up to nothing and it it was such a letdown i was so excited because there were some aspects of the plot that could have been um like investigated and built on and it just flopped at the very end so i was really bummed about that Mm -hmm. and i thought it was just me until i had you two read it and i realized it wasn't just me did you think it was predictable or either of you can answer this uh I didn't exactly predict the ending, but I, I mean, sorry, I should say it. I did have a sense what I thought might happen, but not till maybe two thirds through. Oh, okay. I feel like I was texting because Mariah had read it like last year, whenever Mariah read it, I don't know, but I read this last month. And so as I was reading it, I was like texting Mariah on my updates. And as I was, I was texting her, like, it'd be like, 20 pages in i was like if this fucking happens i'm not reading this book and then it happened and then i kept reading the book (laughs) so i just felt like but i think i have this problem where i just kind of like i i do it with every single book talk thriller you can ask Mariah. i always guess the ending for like 90 percent of these books and it's very frustrating very early i don't know how you managed to do it i don't know i do a t i'm like did you look this up no i I think i don't know if it's because like maybe like I, i just like I just, like, I feel like I overanalyze a lot about what, like, the text says and stuff like that. And I think people, if they try too hard to make it one way, then you just know that they're actually mean the opposite. And so I felt like with this, it was trying too hard to go one way, so I was like, you can infer it the other way. See, the the thing that, I mean, I I, mean, I don't know, we, we don't, I won't, this won't be spoilers, but I, my thought is... This is what they were going for. I think this is. Yeah, I think I don't think it was trying to be like. I guess it was like groundbreaking in like a liberal sense. Exactly. I I think my notes that I wrote down like the book has a liberal tone, and it struck a chord among liberals for being like vaguely kind of left, where you could like feel good about getting the right message. Mm-hmm. Somehow, like everyone's like, "Oh, I got this message about how meat industry is terrible," but I feel like those people missed, in my opinion, the actual meat of this book. No pun intended. <laughs> well, because um, me and Mariah talked about two. Like, I don't. It wasn't this book specifically, but it was a different book. Uh, I think it was actually Haunting Adeline, where we were talking about uh how like conservatives and liberals and stuff like that, where they like to bring issue to like exploitation in certain ways which i think this does it exactly where like the exploitation of animals and stuff like that and then in haunting adeline it was like exploitation of like women and like human trafficking and stuff like that whenever the exploitation of labor is usually a much bigger issue especially here in like the united states i know this book is not set in the united states but like in haunting adeline they were very much focused on like the exploitation of like human trafficking but then human late or like human working labor is much more exploited here in the United States, it is a much bigger issue than sex trafficking is, which obviously is still an issue, but there's, like, bigger trafficking happening that they that liberals and conservatives like to focus more on, like, one tiny part of it instead of, like, the entire big picture on why it's happening. I agree. I think this book would have been really cool if, because it was written in Argentina, if it had focused on, like, coups that had been conducted by the u.s and how that played into like the broader like political scheme of the meat industry that they had and like the entrepreneur side i think that would have been really cool or like the valencia like all of that that happened um between like argentina and guatemala and everything that they did to like silence um activists and leftists and whatnot but it's just it it doesn't go anywhere and it's frustrating because there's at times which we can start getting into the spoilers because i feel like that's yeah we start getting into yeah. it where um it like insinuates that the government is corrupt and like these economic elite are lying to people and like maybe there wasn't this virus all of t- all like the whole time Marcos and, like, brings that up multiple times where it's like is this even a real virus and they like talk about like the birds attacking people he's like i've never seen a bird attack anyone sort of like thing yeah and, she doesn't and, go anywhere with that yeah yeah it it, it, it like created the idea it, it felt like they wanted to go for this conspiracy theory, like in quotes, 
like, oh, this isn't actually what's happening. But I, I honestly think that that's kind of missing the mark and not really what this book about. I mean, can, can I, on my podcast, I feel like as Mariah has made often very, I don't want to say like stretches. I don't think this is a stretch. Tell me what you think about this. My opinion of the book is that the human meat really represented chattel slavery and the subjugation and dehumanization of actual people across the globe and just turning people into, I don't know, uh, objects in some sense. I mean, I don't think that's the only thing that it's about, but it could be. I feel like, I don't know if like, because it felt so liberal to me, it felt like it was very much like the people that are like, vegans and that are like you're a terrible person if you're not a vegan like this is how they're treating animals like it's felt very much like white liberals is how i kind of took it where they're like criticizing oh oh i'm sorry this is what i this is what i wish oh that they could okay have taken. yeah sorry. yeah i think you're right it's completely the meat industry yeah. i wish that they could have taken it to another level of actually critiquing all yeah. the problems of capitalism which mm -hmm. is what causes the meat industry to exist in this way mm -hmm. you don't have a meat industry that's so awful and dehumanizing to animals if we don't have a system that needs profit to survive yeah so. and i think that's like one of the main issues with this book where it's like talking about like the mistreatment of animals like i like i'm a big animal person i've always had pets my whole life whatever i was actually vegetarian for like four or five years too but the thing is is that i think the thing is, is that, like, especially that's something that's not talked about in this book, is about how, like, if you are not eating meat, you're eating vegetables. And those industries where people are, like, especially here in the United States, you go to California and stuff like that, the people that are working there are illegal immigrants that are underpaid, understaffed, and they're, like, overworked. And that's something that's ac actually happening to human beings and not to animals that don't have the same, like, response receptors of actual people. And so... If everyone were to go vegan after reading this book or something like that, it would just make those industries worse for the people already working there. And that's why I think it's stupid to sit here and, like, critique how, like, the animals are treated when you're not even going to talk about how the workers are treated in, like, the vegetable community. I don't know what they call, like, farming community. The, like, agricultural communities. Yes. It reminds me of, like, I don't know how your high school experience went, but I remember we all had to watch Food, Inc., in like my freshman year of high school and food inc predominantly fixates on we did the mistreatment of animals is that the one with the tyson chicken nuggets where like there's like one that we watched yes. about like the tight where like all the chickens are like in the one big like dark barn and like they can't even move yeah i think we watched that yeah but if they have like a little bit of access to the outside world they're then considered free range, range. yeah but it doesn't dive enough into like how like the economic ruling class can control those things and then also how they're monopolizing these different industries and harming farmers, which are like the backbones of the country. Uh, a lot of the times like here, like it's all they're buying them all up and like making them Monsanto. not make enough money. Huh? <laughs> Monsanto. That's like the big like bad yes. like company. And, like, Monsanto oh. is actually crazy, too, because, like, if they're, like, if they, like, buy a farm and then, like, one of their, like, seeds flies off their farm, like, in the wind and lands in someone else's farm, they can, like, sue your farm and, like, completely destroy it. It's crazy, like, the amount of power Monsanto has. They were the first company to ever patent biological life. Yeah. Isn't that wild? They wanted, I think it was them, they also wanted to patent the BRCA gene. Maybe it wasn't then. It wouldn't surprise me. The BRCA gene is the one that they use to um, find, like, breast cancer. So, like, if you didn't have that patent or access to that, then you couldn't, like, diagnose it or something crazy. They also, like, own the rights to something else, like the, um, the Roundup Ready seeds and, like, its connections to, like, heart disease or something. Like, it's crazy. Like, if you go down the Monsanto pipeline... Sorry, we're getting really off track. I don't know, because oh, I feel like it can relate, because at least, like, that's with, like, the culture of this, where this is going to sit here and criticize, like, regular people consuming regular meat, which is what this is, because, like, Marcos, for lack of a better term, he's a working class pe person, and, like, the people around him are working class. Of course, there's also, like, the rich people and stuff that are consuming meat, too, and they get, like, the better quality meat or whatever, because they're rich, but then it doesn't delve into that enough i think that was like my favorite part in the book was 
the higher quality meat and how they obtain it. And I don't know what your thoughts are all on that, where people would volunteer themselves as a means of paying off their debts and like it would be like celebrities and whatnot, but he, being put in the, like the game reserves for a week at a time or whatnot. And if they like live, they got all of their debt wiped. But if not, they became the meal for the, the rich folk. I thought that was one of the most interesting and probably the best parts of the entire book. And also, I think, worthy of critiquing because how is it any different than now where people have to do terrible things to get out of debt? You know, you're, people are put into debt and like the celebrities are put into debt and then they have to literally just give themselves up to a hunt. Like the way they described killing the killing the guy, like they're, you know, the, well, I don't remember graphic. the name of the character. The, it was like, very, rock star very guy or whatever. He was, like, a musician or something. Yeah, I was picturing, like, Steven Tyler or something. They just yeah. killed her. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know why. I don't know why he came to mind. <laughs> but, yeah, the, the, and the other thing that they also, as part of that, is they never really mention race very much in this book. I, I feel wonder... like they kind of, stri- a little bit, but they kind of stripped away race in the book, too. Yeah. But I wonder, well, because, like, I feel like they didn't even talk about, like, I guess, like, their me. I for- what do they call, like... The head. That's they what they call the heads, head. Yeah. Right? I feel like they never talked about like the race of the head or anything or if that I think there was like one scene where it talked about like where it could be like worth different amounts or something, maybe. Because they make it into different kind of leather belts or whatever it was, right? Yeah, Just something like that. But I don't think it was like very much like in mm-hmm. depth. But I also don't know like if there's a reason behind that or like I don't know like what like the race proportions are in like Argentina. But what was the question you did ask, though? You, you before I took it to the race thing, you you were saying you're oh, talking about remember. the the. I think I answered the wrong thing. What were we talking about? <laughs> Something you were saying. Oh, the cl- like the class of the you know. Oh, the, like the like, workers. People giving themselves yeah. up to it. Yeah, it's very. It just feel like it's all like surface level, kind of. Uh, That's what happens when you don't have a Marxist background. <laughs> I mean, the only insight that we get in on, like, impoverished people are the people who are kind of crazed. The who people are that are outside killing, of the plant. Yeah. Scavengers, basically. Yeah. Yes. Where they, like, the one scene where they, like, dump over the truck and they start, like, shooting them and stuff like that. Well, those were but basically again, they don't... poor, right? Yeah. Yeah. People who couldn't afford the meat. Mm-hmm. Well, because I don't even, like, the way that they talked about, like, the meat in general, too, it made it seem like it was very much, like, only, like... A middle upper class like endeavor instead of just like regular people where were people working like where were like the where did his sister work uh, you know like where were all i think her husband doing? worked her husband did something and she was like a stay-at-home mom or something i'm pretty sure because i guess they still have like furniture industries and just regular commerce they just don't have they like also... animals but then that, that would be like a huge part at least here in the united states i guess i don't really know but i feel like If we had it where, like, animals were no longer, like, here, I feel like the entire U.S. economy would collapse. Yeah, and the other thing is that they, did they meant, I mean, the other thing that I wrote down, I couldn't maybe point on it, is it also seemed like a bit of a eugenics type of conversation with uh, how they're breeding the people. And they also, didn't they allude to the fact that a large portion of the the world died, right? Is that what also happened? I Or no? I don't know. Well, because I don't even remember how, like, they decided who was originally going to be, like, the original head. Stuff like that. But I know, like, the idea... Well, yeah. (laughs) But, like, they didn't, like, go deep into it, really, about, like, how they selected these people and stuff like that. Because, also, I know it's, like, they haven't been in this situation for long, because I guess, like, the lady, Jasmine, the, the woman that he rapes and impregnates the, the the head the head that he receives as a gift well because like she's supposed to be like one of like the one that's been bred in captivity the whole time so, and she was like i don't know how old but i'm assuming like maybe like 20s ish so like it hasn't been like going on long enough but then marcus is also young too. she's like so. the kobe beef yeah like oh. they've like they like oh, like wow. i guess her parents were like head too oh. is what and she was not, like, because I guess they have, like, the hormones and stuff like that to inject it so people can grow incredibly fast, but they can't make, like, a fake protein supplement, I guess. <laughs> so people don't have to consume meat. Yeah, I, I assume... This is where, like, all the plot holes start to fall into place is when we start to think about it outside of 
the, the story <laughs> itself because we we don't even get into like the ecological standpoint of killing off every single animal um and what they would do to like the environment oh yeah yeah like how could you have ecosystems anymore you couldn't like you'd have climate collapse i mean i mean yeah. in some sense right you like, do the right? bugs count as like carrying the disease? Do they kill off every single mosquito and stuff like that? Because those can like that actually would be pretty would be pretty helpful. Well, mosquitoes, yes, but not other bugs <laughs> like bees. Yeah, like, that's true. They, like, do they kill all the bees and butterflies? Like all the pollinators? Because they don't even talk about like how like, and that's like where like the whole like government conspiracy comes in too, because like they don't know exactly how like the animals had diseases. But then he, there's like the scene with the dogs in the zoo. Those dogs are fine, fine. Maybe it's more like wild, like in like a rainforest. They still have animals in some way, but they're killing all the domestic ones. And I like birds are birds. animals. Yeah. <laughs> like they didn't kill off all the birds. You, you, if they're gonna kill off every single other like cow, pig. There's like more chickens in the world than there are humans. There's no way they're able to kill all the chickens off. There's yeah, like, and... like it's like a couple thousand like chickens for every person in the world. Yeah, like it took decades for the when they colonized North America to kill off all the buffalo for the most part. It took decades. Like they're killing off all the cows and the and this is pigs like, and the. In the book, it seems like this is still relatively new because not everybody is open to the idea of eating meat. Like Marcos with his high and mighty self, oh, I'm not going to eat human meat, but I'll impregnate one and then kill it off <laughs> once it yeah. serves Did its it purpose. Did he even mention them investigating like a vaccine to prevent them from getting the virus? Was like, that ever mentioned? I didn't. They, I, don't... I feel like there was a very vague like, mention of them like that... trying to do something, but no, they didn't try very hard. I guess that's like all like, the. Why would, but why would the government <laughs> want this to happen? You know what I mean? Like why would the, like, the government if they were to off lie, of poor right? people? They need the poor people's labor, so why are they killing all the poor people and eating them? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it kind of falls apart when, <laughs> when, when, you, when you provide with a little bit of scrutiny. Which I guess, I don't know. I think the thing is, too, that it's also, like, kind of, like, I don't know if maybe, like, it could be, like, translation issues, too, with certain things. Where maybe, if, like, you read it and, like, something would have been maybe mentioned more. But I know, like, people were, like, criticizing... Well, one other thing I was thinking about is Marcos, that's the main character. He, you see he's like disturbed by the work he does, but he's desensitized by it. And I think it is pretty relatable to people like now who do jobs they don't like and that they hate because you literally need to survive and not die to eat and have a home. And like he's hates his job, hates this horrible thing, but he does it anyway. And also you said he was working class. I don't, I don't know. Maybe... I he might have lived like working class, but he seemed like he should have been. Is he like petty money. bourgeois? He didn't own the, his. Well, he wasn't a manager. Yeah, he like just like talked to the other business or like his bosses. Because this yeah. his parent, like his family's business, right? That originally it was, had but then I think it got like bought out. Yeah, like, they sold it off or something when whenever, his dad like, got sick, right? Yeah, I feel bad for his dad. His dad seemed like an okay guy. I don't know, because it was, like, weird, too, because, like, with his sister, like, starting to breed her own head, and she was like, oh, you can help me with this factory, tell me how to cut it up and stuff. He was, like, disgusted by it. But it's like, this is your job, what? It's perfectly reasonable for your sibling to think that you'd be okay with it, and you've given no distaste to it before. Yeah, his treatment of his sister was weird, and, I, like, clearly he resented her for, like, not helping take care of their father, but... Yeah. She was just trying to survive too. She was. She seemed kids. miserable. She just seemed miserable and wanted Something. to survive. <laughs> I mean, she's got two kids. I mean, he don't have no kids. He lost his baby. <laughs> Sorry, I guess that's a sensitive subject for Kristen. That's how you're gonna get us canceled. It's a fictional book character. I don't think he did. I don't think he should have children. And like, I was told to Mariah, like as I was reading this, like whenever he raped, like the head Jasmine whatever he named her. I said, if this was written by a man, I would have, like, thrown this book away. Because, like, as, like, a woman, I feel like this is a very weird sentiment to be talking about. Like, they're like, oh, it's illegal for, like, the men to have sex with their head or whatever, like that. But then it's just, like, and then, like, whenever, like, if the men got caught raping the women, 
and they would get killed or something but like how accurate is that because like we see already all the time like at least here in america with like our justice system they put a they kill innocent people all the time and that they have no like evidence like what is like the proper like investigative thing because it's not like they had police it was like the actual people from like the plant that like checked it out you know what it almost it felt like do you remember the vegan teacher who doesn't <laughs> that was on tiktok do you remember her mm-hmm. you don't know the vegan teacher i wish i was you so bad so. that Lagging sounds amazing the vegan teacher Okay, so what I was going to say is that, like, there's these really crazy animal activists who think that breeding animals is, like, rape. Like, animals can get raped by each other. So, like, the artificial breeding and whatnot that they do. So it almost felt like maybe that's what they were trying, the author was trying to get at. But at the same time, I don't know. Because of it's such a convoluted plot and there's so many plot holes, I can't, like, extract what exactly the intention of having that in the book was supposed to be i think it's just supposed to be like shock value but I it's mean, weird like why would you throw that in when that is like a thing that people i don't know advocate it, for it seemed like they wanted people to turn each other in like it was a self-policing kind of system that's the or maybe i'm just wishing that that's or maybe that's what i got the impression of because what i seen was if you were rich like the guy who owned that gaming preserve he could do whatever he want to any of these pretty much because they have like no meat. laws about like those rich people deciding to like sign up to be head right those people can do what they want so basically the laws just like now apply to don't apply to rich people who can game the system yeah. but they apply to everyone else who can get caught like i don't know maybe they had like hyper surveillance they don't really give enough i, I wanted I more it was 1984. Into the world. i was gonna say that <laughs> I wanted more information on just the world, you know, like more information on how the world works. I think this definitely could have been better if it followed more of like the actual government instead of following like this guy Marco's specific story. Mm, Like a person who worked at the government. Yeah. Or me. I don't know. Because I just feel like Marco, I could not stand him as a character. He was so annoying, first of all. Following him around where he's like, woe is me (laughs) all the time. I, I I got gifted a, a a fancy girl that's like supposed to be meat, but I don't want to eat her, so I'm just gonna impregnate her. But I'm better than everybody because I don't eat this human meat. But I'm just gonna rape my animal and then kill her after she has my wife's baby. Cause I feel like that that was so like it's just like the way that it comes out of the blue like that. That's what made it so like obvious. It was like nothing leading up to that, just for it to happen. Yeah, they had all those conversations where he would call his wife and she was distraught and couldn't have any conversations. And, and then, then suddenly she's okay with this? Yeah, I mean, I, I assumed it was she couldn't have children anymore, right? Yeah, she, well, because they said that was, they had fertility issues with their first baby. Right, right, right. You wonder, like, if adoption wasn't a... You wonder, like, if adoption wasn't a thing anymore because babies like that would just be meat. I don't know. Well, because like whenever like the the mother dies at childbirth, they're like nobody wants the kid. All right, serve it up for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh. See, I knew reading this book was a good idea. <laughs> mm. <laughs> what do they call like baby cows or whatever? Whenever you eat those, and they have Beal? like a name. yeah. There you go, veal. Jesus Christ. Yeah. <laughs> well, the the other scene so. You mentioned, like, some of these things are for shock value. I feel like the scene in the butcher shop where he, you know... Oh, where he, like, rapes the butcher lady? Or I just, I... It's, like, consensual, I guess. But then, like, I felt like I thought before that he was raping her, or she was raping him as a child or something. Oh, I didn't, didn't get because that. Because there was, like, one scene where he's like, whenever I was a boy and she would kiss me or something like that. Oh. Something. I was like, huh? Maybe that was a translation thing. Uh, I don't know. I didn't realize that hold on that scene that scene i'm like oh this book is gonna be like that kind of book <laughs> yeah you weren't expecting the smut the random this is, yeah this is mariah's, I, I had no idea what to expect that's mariah's uh specialty i don't know it wasn't even well written smut no it wasn't it was the no bl- i, I don't the blood the dripped well on her I was like gaggy that was disgusting yeah i don't um that's another thing about the book like i don't read a lot of maybe books like this but i don't think it was that well 
I, for one, I feel like it would have been better as a long form, like a full length novel to Instead of flesh like out pages. no pun intended, more of the book, but <laughs> it just, it wasn't like that, that well written. I don't know. I, that could be a translation It was a too, good though. idea, but it just wasn't executed well enough. That's why I was saying, like, that book, Mary, that was only seven pages, did a more effective job of just, like, critiquing Did you read that, industry. Evan? I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I yeah, was, see? Nobody I, I to. said I was going to, and then I ended up not. That's why I just said it's I was It's all right. Going. You'll have to read it sometime. It's very short. It's quick. It has that body horror where it makes, you like, your skin crawl, but... It gets that point across in a lot less time, a lot less effort. And I, should, I feel I, like yeah. it could have been it. Because they could have done that or something else. It needed to either be like simplified or expanded upon. Well, it reminds me of that book, right now, not- that book you also recommended to me that I or that short story, the um it's been a while uh is a one. Uh, things have gotten it's worse been a since, while we, last since we last spoke. Yeah. yeah. That know. book was very short, but it like really just gutted you. That movie, that book I cool. think, like, really like a lot of Eric LaRocca's books. Like, they do a really good job of writing body horror. I've read a lot of the work that they've made. It's great. I know a lot of people don't like it for some reason. He, okay. It. So it says, but none of them know what this woman thinks, except this is him talking about the butcher lady. Except for him. He knows her well because she used to work at his father's processing plant. Spaniel says strange things to him while she smokes. He wants the visit to be over as soon as possible because the intensity makes him uneasy, and Spaniel keeps him there. She does it every time, just like when he started working at his father's plant, and she brought him to the cutting room after everyone had left. And then he thinks she doesn't have anyone to talk to, anyone to share thoughts with. He also believes that Spaniel would be willing to lie down on the cutting table again and that she'd be just as efficient and distant as she was when he wasn't yet a man. Or not. Or not. Yeah, that's, so that to I me feel like... made it seem like he was like she was like I don't know like how far the abuse went, but it definitely to me it read it as like oh he was she was abusing him while he was younger. Well, saying that she's gonna put him on the cutting like something on the cutting board, and that's board, what cutting, like he did to her. Do. Yeah, so that's why I think it, yeah. I don't know if it was like supposed to be like payback or something like that well then you have then you have like the guy who's like the other guy who works for him who's outside watching and like banging on the yeah bed. like what this is creepy <laughs> oh that's nothing for what Briar reads i've read a lot of stuff man that's not even the worst <laughs> of it i've seen nope. some things <laughs> but, but so that's why i don't know like i don't even understand like the full relationship with him and that lady but that's whenever i read that it made it was like a very much like abuse of power before and then i guess this is him I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what that scene was. Again, I think a lot of it is just like, oh my god, shock value. I mean, they they definitely try and also make it seem like everyone has some kind of trauma. Like the his wife has trauma for losing a child. But I what happened what to tra- the baby, though? Because like, it died after it was born. Like they said, it died in its sleep. It's probably like SIDS. Yeah. Do you think the government say... killed the baby? I don't know how, like, hospitals and things are there, because, like, it seemed like, because, like, whenever his dad died, too, like, they didn't have, like, a doctor present either, really. Like, it was just, like, the nursing home. They not well, they have, want like, you to die so they can just get your meat. Yeah. Because like they would, right? Facility, so you wouldn't have but a doctor. But people die. Yeah. I used to watch people die. But they don't do autopsies when people die? No, not if they're on hospice. But well, even then, if the um, the police department, if you're not on hospice, the police department comes and does an investigation, and then it's up to the families. And usually they don't because, like, they're old. So they're just like, well, at least that was what happened in my experience. More you know. Well, because I wonder if the government killed his dad in the two because he was getting too close to figuring <laughs> out what was going on in the zoo. <laughs> you're giving this book too much credit. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna say I don't feel like I feel like the concept of just how they were gonna critique meat and industry and then they just kind of had these individual he goes to what like four different places, the processing plant, the like the butcher, the person who makes clothing out of them. It's all felt very much like we're gonna do the say the most gross stuff about each of these things and you're Which never I, gonna eat meat again. I understand the like Cutting up an animal is gross. Like, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to go to a butcher place and watch somebody cut up a meat. I'm going to eat that shit processed out of a bag. Like, I don't see that happening. 
But I don't I know, maybe it's because, like, I grew up in the country, so, like, I don't think anything about stuff like that, and I understand that it can be an issue, but also, I get very wary when people make these really, like, broad, sweeping, um, kind of, like, assumptions about, like, meat and, like, meat consumption as a whole being bad when, like, indigenous people already have, like, food apartheid that they deal with, so they have to eat meat. It's like you don't even have, like, that's the thing, too, especially with, like, food deserts and things like that. Like, there's already, like, especially here in the United States, like, people already don't have access to, like, food, like, good food and healthy food in general, and, like, you need protein for, like, part of your diet and to, like, criticize people that are, like, eating meat is just so weird whenever like you could criticize because it felt to me that this is very much because the way marcos acts he very much criticized the people that eat the meat and stuff like that instead of criticizing like the meat industry and stuff like that more like it was like he makes it like a moralizing issue rather than being uh like a social yeah issue. that's that's exactly the thing is he's going at it based on like it's immoral to do this but not critiquing the system that has created the reason for this happening. And you can tell to- that it's liberal too with the way that like the scavengers are written and stuff like that. How they're written as like horrible monsters that are trying to like destroy like the truck of head or whatever and then like they take the food and he's like these are disgusting little human beings that eat the meat blah blah blah. Whenever it's like um these people are probably starving <laughs> well because like that's the thing is you know what's so crazy i had to tell mariah this everyone like criticizes like people like all the vegans love to criticize people that eat me and stuff you drive a car don't you you ride in cars do you know what those tires are made out of animal products it's like animal fat or something is like makes rubber tires so you literally like cannot be vegan do they have vegan gluten-free tires i don't know probably not because you <laughs> i bet i just need a horse <laughs> Horse, horse and buggy. I oh, usually can't have that. They can't have a horse. Get right the exploitation horse. of the horse's <laughs> surplus labor value. They're not getting paid for that. But that's the thing that I think. But they turn them into glue, though, so then they get re- <laughs> reused. <laughs> but that's the thing with, like, white liberalism, where it's, like, they care more about, like, animals. And, like, that's the thing where it's, like, uh, the, that, like, there's, like, the scene from Community where it's, like, I can stand the racism, but I draw the line at animal cruelty. I can excuse racism, but I draw the line at animal cruelty. You can excuse racism. Yeah, I don't necessarily fault people. Like, my, my partner is a vegetarian, but no, she's not I like was a, a vegetarian, vegetarian for years, but I think it's, like, but the issue where they- The they, preachy part. Yeah, where they criticize, like, oh, you're a bad person for eating meat, blah, blah, blah. Whenever they don't even talk about, like, the amount of exploitation that goes into actual humans that are, like, preparing their vegetables that they end up eating. Or they'll say, like, you need to eat quinoa for every meal, which is, like, the most exploitative uh, grain, I think, like, on Earth. Yes, exactly. You know, it's, yeah, it's, that's why the the book very much. uh, I bet the vegan teacher loves this book, for real. And and it's, like, the, the shock value is meant to make you really think, like, oh. Should I really eat this juicy, delicious hamburger, or should I have this mushroom? You know, I, I, I don't mean, know. It's very... I'm not gonna lie. Some of the Impossible Burgers are good. I like them. I I have ever had an Impossible Burger. They're pretty good. And then like the I love like bean burgers. Like I'll eat those. You can ask my boyfriend like all the time. Like on the grill. I don't. Eat, I don't even consume meat that much. Like the only meat I eat is chicken. Like I don't eat like that much. Like hamburger that often or anything like i'm not even a big like meat consumer because i hate like i hate when stuff i i'm a big texture person when i eat and sometimes you know how like meat is just like meaty like you can tell that you're like eating something like it's like chewy and like there's just not just the nature of meat not it's not like every (laughs) like i don't know i guess i eat a lot of processed Food. Maybe if I'm like cutting into like a really nice like ribeye that has like that good marbling in it, like I don't know, it's got just, a little bit of chew to it. I don't know. It's just like sometimes they're like you can like tell that it's just like very like I don't know. It's yucky. You don't like gamey? Do you like like deer or like lamb or? I don't know. I can't say that I've ever eaten. I don't I'm even trying, like steak. I don't even eat brain. steak. Like I don't eat steak at all. You gotta, the only thing I'll eat a t- I'll eat like a burger. Sometimes, and then I'll eat chicken mostly. That's like the main meat I can see. But anything else, I won't eat. Yeah, I don't eat that much red meat because mostly because my like family doesn't eat much of it, so it's easier. But yeah, I mean, it's I mean, 
health wise, it's definitely better to eat less of it. But I don't like the preachy nature of like veganism and this whole like, oh, you know, you can't eat this. But like you, you said, like food deserts exist. People don't have access. If everyone out. had equal access, if if here's the that's the thing about this book. If like the system that creates the unfair food distribution and the fact that like some people just don't have any fucking food. You know, I mean, you can't right access food, you can't afford food. Store. Yeah, like if everyone had equal access, then we can have a conversation about how you can eat more healthy, how you can eat more sustainably for the environment. But we can't even get there because people don't even have fucking food. That's the thing. It's not like there's places where like they don't even have like a grocery store within an hour of them, but then you have like 20 McDonald's within 10 minutes of them, 20 Burger Kings within 10 minutes of them. And that's Who's like- Who's for a thing? That's the thing. That's where like this can go into like the discussion of that. Where it doesn't, and I think that's where, like, makes it surface level. And I think that's, like, no offense to liberals, I guess, but all offense to liberals. Like, they're always very surface level. And that's why I think their, like, main issue is. Yeah, they're critiquing, like, something within a system that can't really be fixed without fixing the, the actual system. Yeah. The system itself. They're like, they're oh, like, well, if you fix so the hard. system. Like, as Marxists, when we're reading this, and they get so disconnected from any sort of class analysis it makes it like it's unimmersive like it pulls you out of the experience because you have to like sit back and like hold on this is the math isn't mathing yeah they just but i can see why this book was popular especially i I can make sense well that's the thing at least like and it's like all of tiktok nowadays will be like leftists that are really just liberals and you can tell when they're liberals because, first of all, they'll support, like, Biden right now, even though he's actively funding a genocide. And he just said, like, earlier today, like, oh, yeah, like, Israel's going to stand strong, blah, blah, blah. And then they're the same people that are telling you that, like, this next November, vote for Biden. Wait, wait, hold on. Well, what other thing would have been interesting to, to met, like, to, for the book aspect, it would have been interesting to hear, to layer in. I, I'm a huge fan in movies and even books, too, where they have information that you get from like a tv news story or like a radio or something it would have been really cool to like while he's driving from someplace like have a commercial on the radio that's oh. telling things about what's happening in society so you could get information about the world that's more unbiased being, like, a yeah yeah just like you know i think of a lot of movies will do this but that would have been interesting to me yeah because i do think with it focusing mostly on marcos it definitely gives it, like, a bad vibe, too. Just because, like... And I think that's the whole thing, is that he's, like, a flawed character and stuff like that, because everyone loves a messed up main character or whatever you want to say. But, like, at this point, the wit... It's so whiny. Like, he comes across so whiny. And it's, like... I think if Marcos had a therapist, it would have been a lot better. <laughs> Someone to talk Dude, about his issues. therapy. Yeah. That's what he needed. He needed fam- familial therapy with his sister and with his dad. Because he didn't even like his dad either. He's like, after my mom died, everything changed. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been easier if he just let his dad die and he ate him or something. Yeah. Like, I don't even understand. I wish Marcos would have gotten eaten. That would have been funny. I was hoping whenever that one guy came to, like, inspect the head or whatever, I was hoping he was going to get caught right there. I actually thought that was, I was considering, like, would he get caught here? I didn't but think he was like going he- to, but I was hoping. Yeah. But I thought, because, like, my thing was, like, whenever, like, he called up his wife to come, like, make her give birth or whatever, I didn't think that the wife was going to be okay with it. That's what I knew. Like, I was like, oh, he's going to, like, offer the baby to his wife or something. And I thought she'd be like, ew, what the fuck is wrong with you? But no, she was like, oh, my God, you're the best. Like, what? Best birthday ever. <laughs> yeah, for real. But I don't even understand. This book is a journey. Well, it's because, an adventure. Like, the thing is, is that, like, how are they even going to explain that suddenly they have a new child? Dude, like, the wife wasn't pregnant. They weren't talking about getting pregnant. Like, his family knows they've been separated since the baby died. I don't know. They found the they found the baby in a little basket in the river. It'd be Moses. You know that's not true. You know they'd be cooking that kid up for dinner. <laughs> serving it up in a pie. <laughs> It'd be in the bakery. Isn't, isn't, isn't like, a baby goat called a kid or yeah 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 so that's what it'd be good metaphor i'm surprised they didn't cook out that kid and eat it for dinner i thought i thought the big twist was gonna be like he ended up killing his kid and eating it or something 
That, that would have been, been interesting, I think. Or like everyone is a vampire. I don't know, something like a big <laughs> twist. But like Daybreak with Ethan <laughs> Hawke. Or... <laughs> I've seen that movie. Um, any other thoughts then about this book? It's a liberal book. Yeah. If you're a liberal, I guess I mean, you can read it. <laughs> I, I mean, I'll stand by my original statement that if you were to get this book, For free. you know, rent at the library, it's worth reading just to see. It's not a long book. No, it's less. Know, it's but... like less than 200 pages, I think. It goes by very quick, but as for like the body horror genre, I think there's better options that you could read. I, I think like honestly, by Jeff Ketchum is really good. Or I feel like I didn't even think it was like that gross. Like I just thought it was like annoying. Like that I had to keep reading it. I was like, okay, I get it. Like I found it a little bit gross. Like body horror is the one kind of horror type of genre. Like when I watch movies, that it does can sometimes gross me, especially like things with, like people's eyes and their face skin those kind of things so it did creep me out but it's not well because you said you had a nightmare while you were reading it or something i remember you messaged us that yeah i did have like i had a dream about reading the like having read the book or something so (laughs) it definitely like did something to me that i'm still thinking about it that's the thing i think it you it's like it makes you think but not me i threw that shit out i stopped as soon as i finished it as soon as I finished it, I was like, get this shit out of here. I'm about to go donate this. It can this. be I... thought-provoking, unless you're Christian. I have a little three- free library right around the corner of my house. I'm about to go throw this in there so somebody else can get it for free. Um, But if we don't have any more thoughts about whatever this book was called, Andrew's <laughs> Flash, <laughs> uh, How to Lose the Time will, will be our next episode. Although I am reading a book now that's um, someone on TikTok wrote. Ooh. Ooh, what is it? What's it's, your current read? So current it's read. um. We should do this the, with our guests. <laughs> the, the person on TikTok, their name is Stephanie Ed, and the book that they they wrote is called um, "The Clear Case," and it's like a leftist noir mystery. Um, oh, and now the writer and the actor strike is up. So oh yeah, so now you can posting new movies. Yeah, you can do new movie stuff. I know that while Oppenheimer is uh, coming out for streaming. I love that movie. So there's, yeah, there's uh join us next time for how to lose the time war. That'll be out on November 30th. Thank you for being on with us, Evan. My pleasure. It was a lot of fun to, uh, to discuss this book that everyone loves that we all hated. <laughs> Not really, but sort of. Um, yes. Do you have anything, well, I guess besides, like, you already said that you're going to be doing Citizen Kane and things like that, but I guess also be looking out for all the new movies that Evan can now publicly talk about. Yeah, I have to think about what new, what movie's coming out soon. There'll be some good ones. Yeah, and you can, uh, you know, find me on Instagram, Left of the Projector Pod, and tell me what movie you want to see. I never ask people to do that. Like, what movie do you want to hear? Not yeah. that anyone's going to tell me anything. Um, But, yeah, I guess, do you have anything you want to say, Mariah, closing out? Okay. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Uh, Follow us on our social medias. Bye.